The Yanks had reached the Rhine, the last barrier guard in the art of Germany. Their plan was to mount an amphibious assault across the river, but the Germans were dug in all along the opposite bank, ready to give them a pasting. Our job was to glide or attack the German side and raise hell among the defences there, giving the Yanks a chance to get across safely. This was going to be our first time on German soil, and unless we could help the Americans get across to join us, our stay was going to be a pretty short one. The Yanks had reached the Rhine, the last barrier guard in the art of Germany. Their plan was to mount an amphibious assault across the river, but the Germans were dug in all along the opposite bank, ready to give them a pasting. Our job was to glide or attack the German side and raise hell among the defences there, giving the Yanks a chance to get across safely. This was going to be our first time on German soil, and unless we could help the Americans get across to join us, our stay was going to be a pretty short one. Thanks to the Brits, our boys made it across the Rhine and into the German heartland. Everyone had Berlin in their sights. The Blue Ridgers were no different. But we ended up being deployed south into Austria. The last battle of our war would be at a place there called Braunen am Inn. Division HQ had reports of a last ditch concentration of German troops around the town and sent us in to investigate. We didn't know what the hell to expect. Braun and Am Inn was the birthplace of Adolf Hitler. Well, maybe the Germans had a better reason than that for wanting to hold on to the place. Okinawa. The last link in the chain to Japan, and getting this war over and done with. It was the largest of the Ryukyu Islands, and our first foothold on the Japanese home islands. When we invaded mainland Japan, it would be from Okinawa. We were fighting on Japanese soil for the first time. They had been desperate to stop us before, but now they were fanatical. The guys in Europe were lucky. Their war was almost over. Ours was about to reach its bloodiest moment. Okinawa had been turned into a fortress island. At its center was Shuri Castle, an actual medieval royal fortress. Shuri was important to the Japanese military and psychologically, it was the key to the island's defenses and a symbol of Japanese power and pride. If we took it, so the thinking went, we'd take Okinawa. We'd do that, and the door into Japan would be open at last. One more hard push, and we'd finally be within sight of the end, and the road to going home. Guadalcanal was just the beginning. Next up was BDO the next link in the chain that led all the way to Japan. It had taken six months to seize Guadalcanal. BDO would have to fall a lot quicker than that. They made it sound easy, telling us the island wasn't even the size of Central Park. I'd never been to New York, but I'm sure the park there didn't have a couple of thousand Japanese troops dug into hundreds of hidden pillbox bunkers. Sometimes it felt like the whole damn thing was about airfields. We captured islands to get the airfields on them. From the airfields, we could launch heavy bombers to soften up the next island in the chain. BDO was no different. There was an airfield there, and we needed it. And the Japanese needed to stop us. The Japanese general in command said it would take a million men a hundred years to take his island. We were only a single marine division, and we'd been given three days to get the job done. We were getting closer to Japan. The closer we got, the more determined the Japanese were to stop us, and the more ferocious the fighting was going to get. Saipan, one of the Marianas Islands, was the next link in the chain. They were ready for us after we landed, pushing us back almost to the sea. But we dug in and stayed put, waiting for the Japanese to make their move. We wouldn't have to wait long. To protect Japan, they had to drive us back off Saipan. We took back the beachheads, but the Japanese didn't budge easy. We had to dig them out of every foxhole, bunker, and concealed gun emplacement across every inch of that island. Even then, we weren't through. The enemy still held the summit of Mount Tapachau. They were dug in tight up there, defending artillery emplacements that had ranged in on our positions. Somehow, 
Those guns had to be silenced. That's when we found out you don't always have to descend into hell. Nope. Sometimes to get to hell, you start climbing. I was a Virginia miner before the war started. I didn't have to join up. Mining was vital to the war effort, but I did it anyhow. 80th Infantry, General Patton's Blue Ridger boys. We'd been through France, and now we're looking to get into Germany. The end of the war was supposed to be in sight. Guess no one told the Germans that. They went on the offensive at the Battle of the Bulge. Our objective was to cut the supply line for the German advance at a place called Edelbruck, and we'd have to move fast to do it. Most everyone else was retreating, but not us. The 80th only moves forward, just like our motto says. Fourth Armored linked up with us at Edelbrook, and were we glad to see him. Now we were gonna be support for the push on to Baston. It was Christmas Day. The terrain between us and Baston was crawling with crowds. And I can't remember a day in my life when it was as cold as it was then. The Germans had thrown a ring of steel defense around Baston, but the fourth were the same as us. More of General Patton's boys. And together, we were gonna prove that blood and guts mattered more than snow and steel. My mates in my old unit thought I'd gone daft when I volunteered for the 6th Airborne. <laughs> I mean, who in their right mind goes jumping out of perfectly good airplanes into the middle of jerry L territory, eh? But we'd been sitting and taking it for years from Jerry, and, well, I suppose I just wanted to have a crack back at them. After D-Day, we thought we had them on the run, right up until they counterattacked in the Ardennes. The Yanks were bogged down in Bastogne, so we went in to give Jerry a fright and soften up their defences for the Yanks' full armor division to break through. Oof, crawling around in the freezing dark in a town full of German troops. Well, it's just the thing to keep a bloke warm on a cold winter's night, isn't it? We'd done our bit at Bastogne, and we're pulling out of a place called Burr to rendezvous there with our CO, Captain Randall. Yeah, trouble was, we didn't know it at the time, but the Germans were retreating in that direction as well. I mean, he was a capable bloke, Captain Randall, but even he was going to be in a spot of bother here. <laughs> 